director and a partner for Bison Athletics. So thank you to Maddie. We've got a great lineup for you today, featuring the head coaches from both our men's and women's programs, as well as a select group of student athletes. And before we begin with head coach Trevor Woodruff and our women's program, let me bring you all up to speed on where the program is at this point in the 2021 season. After an 8-0 start, the women's program has been on an extended pause since January 31st and has not played a game in 31 days. The pandemic played havoc with pro the programs throughout the league, and as such, the Patriot League changed the postseason tournament policy, allowing for all teams in the postseason tournament so everybody qualifies and can play. The Bison earned the number one seed based on the winning percentage and will take on Loyola in a quarterfinal round game on Sunday at home in Soika Pavilion. Although the Bison only had a chance to play eight games during the regular season, the Patriot League coaches were certainly impressed with the program, as evident by the results of the soon-to-be-released all-conference honors. Folks watching this luncheon, you're getting a, a pre-look at the Patriot League all-conference teams and some great news for Bucknell. Senior forward Tessa Brugler and junior guard Taylor O'Brien were both selected to the all-Patriot League first team, while senior guard Abby Cap was honored as an all-Patriot League third team member. Brugler and senior forward Autumn Seppi were both named to the Patriot League's all-defensive team. And in addition, for the second year in a row, head coach Trevor Woodruff was tabbed as the Patriot League Coach of the Year. So congratulations to all those in the program who received those honors. All that being said, it's time to welcome our women's head coach, Trevor Woodruff, to today's program. Coach, how are you? Congratulations to you and your staff on the Coach of Year honors, and thanks for being here today. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate the uh, the introduction. Certainly, we're you know really proud of what the team's been able to do through difficult circumstances, and uh, you know we have a great deal of respect for the other coaches and teams around the league, which certainly makes that that award very humbling. So, Coach, where do we start? I mean, uh, let's rewind uh, maybe and go back to January, the end of January, and maybe explain to those viewing today what happened with the program and the institution that, that caused such a long pause for, for the Bucknell team? Uh, right. So it's, you know, it's been a constant challenge for, for folks around the country. Uh, we're no different. Um, you know, we had a positive test uh, within our tier one group following the Lehigh series uh, the last weekend of January. It put everybody on the shelf for a couple of weeks. Um, coming out of out of that, um, we then had additional positive, which which put a few more folks out, and then that extended even for, for further because uh, the school uh, as a whole was was on pause. Athletics were shut down, so we we missed some games for that. Really, it's just been uh, you know snowball effect, so to speak, snowball effect. Um, you know, we haven't had a lot of a lot of good news, but once the league opened it up of hope and, and here we are playoff playoff league, uh, Patriot League tournament time and um, you know we're tracking towards towards being close to whole uh, competing on Sunday so that's that's been the best bit of news we've had here in a while well obviously coach a long playoff presents all, all sorts of problems in the middle of the season what have been the biggest challenges for you and the players during this stretch of no competition I think it's really just been uh, the mental health aspect. I, um, you know, it's really challenging. The, si the situation of, you know, every day you wake up, you just don't know. There are no guarantees. You think you may have practice that day, and then and then you don't. And that extends for two weeks. Or in this case, you know, we have folks in in, uh, in quarantine for for nearly a month's month. Um, and so it's just that part of it. Uh, there's no getting around it. It's just, it's just been brutal. Uh, I give our players a ton of credit. Um, you know, they've, they've dealt with it about as, as well as you can. It hasn't been issue free. Um, you know, but they've been, they've showed a real, uh, high level of, of toughness, mental and physical toughness to, to deal with what they have and, you know, and still, still alive and ticking here in terms of basketball. So it's difficult enough to play any game after such a long layoff, but you guys are in a situation where you're playing a tournament game in a win or go home situation with so little time to properly prepare for that. 
what are you and the team focusing on this week? Um, well, in a lot of ways, it's just back to, to the beginning. Um, you know, with, with a month of virtually no, no basketball, certainly we haven't done anything collectively with the entire group. Um, we're slowly piecing it back together. Um, you, know, you know, we won't have any excuses when we get to the weekend. Uh, we've had challenges, but we're going to show up with who we have. We're going to play. And, you know, I've heard enough over the, the last couple of years that uh, I think if you underestimate this group, regardless of the circumstances, you probably are making a mistake. I, I really believe in the, in the type of people that we have. So I, I think we'll, we'll show up and play as well as we can. Does that mean we'll be the same team that walked off the floor at, at Lehigh? Probably not. But we won't make any excuses. And, um, you know, I really feel good that, that this group is going to get an opportunity to compete. Um, you know, somebody's going to have to beat us to, for us to be, to be gone, hopefully. You know, it's not just going to be we, we, we weren't able to show up. Somebody's going to have to beat us. So preparing the best we can, take every day as a gift. Uh, we, we're attacking every day like it's a game. We try to win today. That's kind of been our mindset, put the blinders on and win today and wake up tomorrow, try to win tomorrow. That's, that's been the mindset. So we mentioned Loyola is the first-round opponent. And they may have struggled during the regular season, but at this point, the slate is wiped clean and everybody gets a fresh start. Uh, what kind of challenges do the Greyhounds present and where do you think their mind is that your team has not played in so long? You know, I, I wouldn't pretend to know what they're thinking. Uh, I'm sure, you know, like us, they're happy to be in. Um, you know, initially with eight teams, they may have not, not have gotten in so they probably feel uh, like they have a new leash on on their basketball life similar to us so I'm sure they're excited um, obviously you know because of the position of of the Bucknell program over the course of the last several years there's always a bullseye I think teams get excited to play um, because most of the time the pressure is on is on Bucknell uh, they're expected to win so going to get a, a really excited opponent. Um, it's a talented opponent. If you look at them individually, uh, their players are, are good players. They're talented. They can do a lot of things. And, you know, a team with that much talent, it just takes one day for them to put it all together, um, and, and you've got your hands full. So we expect it to be, you know, between our challenges, a talented opponent, uh, the circumstances, the situation, it's going to be, it's going to be dogfight. And we're going to have to, uh, whatever our best is at this point, we're going to have to be at or near that to, uh, to win the game. Yeah, coach, you know, I don't know that if most Bison fans realize just what kind of challenge your team has ahead of them this weekend. I mean, there's something to be said for consistency, rhythm, teamwork, and confidence. And that all comes from working together as a team on a daily basis. But on the very positive side, your coaching staff and your team have had a tremendous amount of postseason experience. So how is that going to help you in that game? Yeah, I think I think in both cases, obviously, again, I said before, we won't have any excuses. Um, you know, win or lose, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're going to just do what we can to prepare and be ready to go. Um, with that said, you know, if taking a month off just prior to the conference tournament were the best way to prepare teams around the country doing it prior to COVID. Uh, it's, it's not ideal. Um, and we, we didn't expect the season to be ideal. Um, maybe worse than maybe we expected, but regardless, um, you know, we have a veteran group. Uh, they've been there before. They've won big games. They've shown that in difficult circumstances, uh, they can they can be their best when their best is required. They've been able to be their best, and so I expect us um, to be as good as we can be on Sunday. Um, what that means, I don't know. You know, what is our best right now, given the circumstances? I don't know, but I would not bet against these kids. So we'll be celebrating Senior Day prior to the game on Sunday. Take a little bit of time and talk about this tremendous group of four seniors and what they mean to Bucknell women's basketball, both on the court and off. 
Yeah, so obviously I was very fortunate. Our staff was very fortunate to step into a situation. Um, we had a strong collection of veteran players going back to last year, and those two seniors, and then, of course, these four. And, you know, they, what they've been able to do in many ways is unparalleled. When you look at the success of the, the program historically, what this, this group of four has done now um, puts them – and elite status amongst other really good senior classes. And I think that's deserving. Uh, when you look at the, the effort that they put in, the time that they've put in, it wasn't easy for them. They, uh, you know, they sat on the bench behind some really good players, in some cases for, for two years, and maybe got a few minutes a game. But when their opportunities came, uh, you know, last year, when it was their turn to elevate and continue to, uh, lead the program where others had left it, they didn't miss a beat. And so that says a lot about who they are as players, obviously, but who they are as people is, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to put into words. They just they know how to do things the right way uh, across the board, academically, socially, uh, and they, they get things done. They are going to be successful at whatever they decide to do next throughout their lives because they just understand it, they get it, and they're willing to do the work it takes to be successful. In case some of our Bison fans are wondering about that, you know, it's, it's nothing's been typical, including our senior day celebration. Typically, we'd have fans there and we'd have parents there and family. But what we were able to do for the women's team last week and what we'll do for the women's team this week, just so the fans at home know, we actually invite the families to join the ceremony via Zoom, and we put them up on the uh, Soika Pavilion video board so that their daughters can see them on the screen, and uh, they they are piped in uh, into the uh, program so they can hear and see everything at home. So even though they're not there in person, we try and get the families there as much as we can. So we'll do that on Sunday. So, Coach, I, I wanted to really thank you for taking the time today to join us and give us some thoughts as you get ready for this game. We wish you and the staff the best of luck on Sunday against Loyola. Thanks. You appreciate all the support. I've, uh, you know, I've received many messages, uh, emails, mostly from, from supporters who, who have uh, really just gone out of their way to continue to support us through really difficult month February. And I, I appreciate that. All of you that reached out, thank you. And uh, I think you're going to be proud of, of, of this group moving forward uh, starting Sunday. So we'll continue to be proud anyway. All right. Thanks, Coach. Time now to welcome in the women's players to today's show. We've got junior guards Taylor O'Brien and Marley Walls joining us. Good afternoon, ladies. Hi. Thanks for joining us today. Taylor, we're going to start with you. Uh, thanks for being here. Taylor is a 5'9 guard from Lafayette Hill, Pennsylvania, who attended Plymouth White Marsh High School. First of all, congratulations on being named to the Patriot League's first team. Thank you. What does that mean to you to be considered as one of the top five players in the conference and to also share that honor with one of your teammates in Tessa Brugler? I mean, our team has worked so hard over the past year, and it's been, like, definitely a struggle, like, going, like, up and down with COVID and everything. But um, I couldn't have done it without my teammates. Like, they've been there every step of the way. Like, everyone has done everything they could for us to be able to have this opportunity to even play a couple games. So I owe it all to them. Well, it's an awesome honor, and, and you're right. Your teammates make a lot of that possible. How excited are you and eager are you to get back to competition and how tough is it going to be to maybe shake off some of the rust after not having played for so long? I mean, just being able to get back on the court is like super exciting because a lot of the teams don't have this opportunity and we're all really excited just to come back and play. Um, definitely going to be difficult because our lack of practice, we've been in the hotel so many times, just like stuck in isolation. So just getting back into the swing of things is definitely going to be um, a really tough challenge, but I think we can do it. So you made a really good point right there, and I'm not sure many of our fans or viewers at home know exactly what it means to be stuck in isolation. Can you kind of describe what you guys had to go through and what that was like? Um, it was definitely really, really tough. We've been uh, in the hotel four different times. We The third time was only a couple days, but we've been in there for two weeks at a time, just sitting 
by yourself in your room. You could go outside like maybe once a day, like uh, our food was delivered to us. It like really was like a closed off. Like you didn't get to talk to anybody. Like it was, it was really tough. And like, you had a lot of time to think and it was definitely a challenge for all of us, but our team is like one of the toughest teams to be able to get through that so many times. And I just, I'm so proud of everybody for being able to stick through it. So there've been a lot of ups and downs which we've already talked about this year, but you still have an undefeated record. How would you describe this most unusual season? I mean, you can't really describe it. It's just like unreal because every, every single day you're like wondering whether you're going to play or not. And even if you're going to get the chance to practice, like you just have to take every day, like as it's, you're going to be your last day. Like our seniors say that all the time because they really don't know if we already had our last game or if we're going to have five more games after this. Like we're just taking it day by day. So Patriot League tournament is here. It, it's a few days away now. What do you and your teammates need to do to bring home another Patriot League championship? And is there any added motivation with the way last year's tournament run came to such a sudden stop? I mean, we definitely were all very disappointed of the outcome last year. So I think we definitely just want to all work together so we can like kind of show that we were going to win last year. Like, let's just win this year instead because we still have the same goals. Like, we're really going to have to stick together and play together. And it's all going to be who wants to play at the end and who can really, like, bring it home. So we are really trying to get as much practice as we can, as much time on the court that we can, just so we can have a chance at winning. The coach and I talked about them a second ago, but the class of 2021 – will certainly go down in Bucknell women's basketball history as one of the best ever here. What's your favorite thing about the current senior class? And what have you learned from them that you'll carry over into your senior year? I mean, their energy is unmatched. Like every single one of them, they're so different in all aspects, but they all work together so well. And they're just all great people to be around, like individually and as a team, like they're great leaders and just show us how it, like should be in times of struggle, like they're there to really help us like be all together as a team. So I think that they're literally the sweetest people and I hope the best for them once they leave and we just want to make them proud. Well, Taylor, we appreciate what you've done today for taking out the time and, and we wish you and your teammates the best of luck in the tournament and Bike Nation is certainly pulling for you and the men's team as you guys have been through a lot of ups and downs this year. So we wish you the best of luck on Sunday. Thank you so much. All right. So time now to welcome Marley Walls to the show. Marley is a 5'8 junior guard from Bardstown, Kentucky, where she attended Nelson County High School. Welcome, Marley. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me. So a word we've heard a lot in this current landscape is perseverance, which in the case of your team could not be more appropriate. How have you and your teammates managed to stay motivated and invested in this season during a month of no basketball? I think the biggest thing that we've been able to do to kind of keep our heads in the right space is just be there for each other. I think what we've learned in this time where we've been like stuck in a room is that you really have to check in on each other, whether it's just like, hey, how are you doing? Or like, I'm here for you. I know you're going through. I think that's the biggest thing that's one really like bonded us over this past few months. Um, but I think that along with just knowing how much we've sacrificed and how much we've given up, like we've been here through the holidays. I think having that in the back of your mind, like we don't just want to quit now. That's another thing just fueling us to get to that championship game. And perseverance certainly applies to you personally as well. It's been a, a long road for you recently with a knee injury last year and then an injury in practice this year and now the long pauses to the program. So when you're rehabbing, an injury and you have the time to see things differently from the bench. Um, what are some of those things that you think you've been able to take away watching the team during that time that you can now use for yourself going forward playing the game? I think one of the biggest things just watching over the past few or not few years, but the past year being injured, I think is you just understand both the coaching side of it as well as the player side. Like you get to see both perspectives. You understand why he's yelling and then you see like what they're seeing on the floor. So I think that aspect I've been able to like kind of take my game onto the floor and like maybe be the person to help. Like if someone's getting yelled at, maybe like just explain the other side to that person. 
as well as I think my roles kind of changed a little bit in the sense that when you're on the bench and you're injured and you can't play, you do have to pick up that new motivation factor, even just like being the person to cheer on your teammates because you can't really contribute on the floor. So I think now that I'm playing again, I still kind of have that mindset of like being the person like to pick someone up or like if someone's not having their game, like just go into them and be like, you got it. Just like those little those little points that you can see from the bench, like if someone's like kind of struggling a little bit, you can go in and like give them the motivation to like push through a little bit. So you rehab the knee injury, you come back this year, and then you have an injury in practice, which I'm not so sure many folks know what happened there. Can you share what that was all about? Yeah, I was guarding one of our freshmen, Caroline, and she went to go for a layup and my chin got caught on her shoulder. So she kind of like jumped into me. And then it pushed my front teeth in front of my bottom teeth and pushed my bottom teeth loose. So then I had to go get them like glued together for two weeks. And then I chipped one of them. And then I had to go get that fixed. So you, you've been through the ringer. <laughs> Fingers crossed. No more for, for Marley Wallace. I know. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that I've heard through the grapevine is that you've been doing a lot of painting lately. <laughs> So can you tell us what kinds of things you paint and, and which piece maybe you're most proud of? Um, I kind of have a little bit of an artistic background from high school. I was like really into it and I did like competitions and stuff. But once we were put in the hotel, you really have endless time. So I think that was one of the biggest things that got me back into it. And then Autumn, one of our seniors, she paints a lot. So like over the break, we had a lot of free time with Christmas break. We only had basketball, we didn't have class. So I think that's one of the biggest things that we found like an outlet to kind of just like do something different and be creative. It's a great idea. <laughs> so back to the basketball part of this. How does the feeling of a Patriot League tournament game differ from the regular season? And in addition, this tournament game is not just another postseason game. It takes on a whole new meaning this year. How motivated are you and your teammates to overcome that challenge that lies in front of you on Sunday? I think just knowing that we're in the tournament and it is Patriot League time is that we can't just come out and like lay an egg like these games. It's one and done. Like if you lose, you, you're not going to be able to make up for it the next game. So I think that's one thing where we come in. Everyone's a little bit more focused coming into warm ups. Like everyone knows that like this could be the last game we play with each other, last game we play at the seniors. And then also, like you said, like coming off last year, we didn't really have a chance to finish what we started or we kind of have a chip on our shoulder. We have something to prove because at the end of last year, there were teams talking like, oh, like we could have been the championship when in the back of our head, like it was us. So I think this year we're coming in like this is our time to finally show everyone that it was us last year and it's us this year. Well, Marley, I've got one more question for you, for you today, and it's from one of our viewers. And this is from Dave in Lewisburg. And he says, I think all of us who would have been in the stands for you this year admire and respect your team's dedication and commitment. Is there a teammate or an event that served as a catalyst to bring you all together? I think an event, the whole winter break, I think, kind of speaks for what really brought us together specifically this year and um, just what we were going through. Because throughout the semester, we really didn't have a lot of time to like hang out as a team or get to know our freshmen as we would have in previous years. Whereas this year winter break, it was like only us. We only hung out with each other. Like we were kind of in a bubble. So I think one event that can kind of paint a picture for everyone is we, it snowed a ton more than I've ever seen. And a lot of us went out and we went sledding and like had a lot of fun doing that. So I think just the little activities that we got to do together really got to bond. Um, and just winter break in general, where it was only us kind of signifies like how we came together and what it meant for us. Well, Marley, we're, we're glad you guys are all together and back on the court. And uh, we wish you and your teammates the best of luck Sunday as you take on Loyola in the first game of the Patriot League tournament for the Bison. So good luck to you. Thank you. All right. I want to thank our women for being here today. So before we get set to welcome in the head coach of the men's program, Nathan Davis, let me provide some information on where the men stand at this point in the season. After a four-game winning streak, the Bison men found themselves in much the same situation as the women and had to halt play after their game January 31st. After nearly four weeks of no competition, the men were able to take on American University last weekend in a pair of games. However, the Bison were extremely shorthanded without the services of John Meeks, Andre Screen, Malachi Rhodes, and Alex Timmerman, who are all still in the middle of their return to play protocol.
Bucknell lost a very close game at Soika on Saturday to the Eagles before falling again on Sunday in Washington, D.C. And with a 4-6 and six record, the men earned a number 6 seed in the upcoming Patriot League tournament. They'll travel to number 3 Lafayette for a 2 o'clock tip-off on Saturday afternoon. The Leopards took a pair of games from the Bison early in the season, but this time around, Bucknell hopes to be at full strength in terms of personnel. All that being said, it's time to welcome our men's head coach, Nathan Davis, to today's program. Thanks for joining us today, Coach. Thanks, Todd. It's always a pleasure. <clears throat> so, Coach, we've reached the end of what certainly has been a very strange regular season. And as was mentioned, the team had not played or practiced for almost a month prior to the American Games last weekend. And on top of that, you were missing several players for that game, those games. Can you give us a status update on the guys who were unable to participate last weekend? You know, there's always a lot of uncertainty. Um, so it's, you can never say for certain what's going to happen by the time you get to Saturday. What I can say is that as of now, everyone is a full go, and uh, we're progressing that way. I know. That's the best answer anybody can give day to day for sure. Appreciate that. So the uncertainty you mentioned uh, of the past several weeks must have been hard on the players. And as coaches, what kinds of things have you done to keep them as upbeat as possible? I mean, uh, what have you been able to do also from a physical standpoint? Were the players allowed to do anything? You know, I know the uh, the women touched on it, and there's no other way to put it. The quarantine is, is really hard, um, much harder on the players and the staff. At least we're able to, to be at home and doing it. They're in the hotel by themselves, and it's very limited. Um, we're able to get them on with our strength coach a few times, uh, well, actually a number of times during the periods they could do some body weight stuff. Either like, they were allowed out, um, but they didn't have the, the virus for 30 minutes a day. But again, it was really cold and snowing, so that was limited. Um, so it was really tough. Um, I think you do the best you can and trying to get out. The, the first thing is you try to, to get back and get some sort of semblance of rhythm um, going into games. And, and now everybody has to try to prepare for the tournament. But I think, like I said, it was, it was hard. There's no other way around. It's very hard. Before the, pa the pause, uh, the team is playing some really, really good basketball. And um, what was the team doing, in your opinion, in late January to, to, to be on that type of run they were on? Yeah, I thought we were playing really well. I thought we were playing as well as anyone in the league. I thought we had a chance to get uh, on a good run heading down a stretch. And unfortunately, um, like so many people on this campus, we got caught up in the, in the COVID stuff. I thought that we were playing with uh, tremendous intensity. Um, I thought we were defending at a pretty high level. Um, we were active and then offensively, we were sharing the ball and moving it and, uh, and getting good shots. So I thought we were, we were heading in, in, the, in a good direction. So obviously, John Meeks was a big part of that run. He had a couple 30-point games in there. Um, and he was recently named yesterday to the All-Patriot League team. Uh, what makes John Meeks such a special player, Coach? First off, he was named to the third team All-League, which is a joke because he's easily one of the two or three best players in the league. Let's start with that. Um, unfortunately, um, various circumstances, he only had a chance to play in four games. But the reality is no one played a normal schedule, so it should have been taken into account. It wasn't. And I feel... I'm glad that he was recognized in some respect, but certainly should have been much higher than that. I think that he is a extraordinarily versatile offensive player. Um, can shoot with range, can put on the floor and attack, and finish as a really good passer, can post. So you got five tool baseball players, he's that offensively. And then I think defensively, um, for the first time, really having a chance to, without having to deal with injuries in the offseason a lot, he came back in tremendous shape. I think he's one of our better uh, perimeter defensive players. It allows us a lot of versatility in who's guarding when and how we're going to play stuff. So, so you've got that. And then I think he brings a certain level of intensity to everything we do every day. Um, and also brings a certain confidence to the team and it just raises everyone's play. So I think that he's been outstanding. It's part of why when we when he was playing, we were 4-0 and none of those games were really even close. Um, we got to get back, and it's going to be a challenge moving forward. But I certainly think that, that he, along with the other guys, will get back. Yeah, we've got a great opportunity in front of us. We're going to take advantage of it. Another of the seniors who will be joining us shortly is, is Paul Newman. And he played very well on Sunday in D.C. and is now shooting 62% on the season. How has Paul's game progressed over his four years here as a member of the Bison? Well, I think uh, the, the first thing is he's really good around the basket. He finished with both hands. He's much more patient in the post. Um, than he was as a freshman. Now, some of that might be you don't go and it's not a foul every day, so you get a little more comfortable. Um, but I think he certainly grew from that. And I think just being a, a senior who's played, there's a confidence. There's a, a certain confidence that comes from, from having competed and played at a high level and played in meaningful games. And if you go back to last year, um, we were playing really well at the end of the year last year. He was playing really well. You go to the tournament, we played well in the tournament. He played really well. And I, 
it was great to see him bounce back on Sunday and play at a high level. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing that continue this coming week. So you add in Jordan Seachin to the two names we just discussed, and you've got your senior class for this year. What has that group meant to the program over the last four years? Well, I think they've all been very important in a lot of success we've had. Um, over their four years, we've, we've been in the NCAA tournament. We've won the league. We've been at least to the semifinals every year, 120 games. And I think that every one of them has played a big role in that. Um, when they've been needed, they've been uh, – we need them to step up and make plays. They have. Um, they've shown up and worked every day and pushed people. Um, and push each other. And so I think they've been very integral into what we've done. And as I mentioned earlier, obviously the Bison will take on Lafayette Saturday at 2 o'clock. That game's on ESPN+. Plus. Give us a little scouting report on the Leopards and, and what do we need to do to come out on top this time around against uh, Lafayette? I think the first thing is they always are a really good offensive team. Um, they share the ball. They play offense with pace. They push it, so you got to get back. They move the ball, so you got to recognize personnel. You got to be in position so you're not recovering late. You got to make sure you're contesting everything when they shoot it. And then you got to limit the one shots. You don't have to do it twice in the same possession. And then offensively, I always think the big thing is they've done a better job this year and in the last couple of years of, of being more aggressive defensively. And so you'd be initial part of getting the offense started against that and then making sure you get the shots you want um, on your terms. Um, Typically, you're going to get pretty good shots against them. You got to make sure that you don't just settle for pretty good, that you get great. And if you do those things, you got a chance to put up a lot of points. How important is rebounding going to be in a game like this one? Rebounding is always really important. Um, the the team that, that typically, when you get a tournament play, the team that gets the best shots most consistently is going to be the one that wins. And if you're getting a lot of offensive rebounds, you get up a lot of offensive rebounds, the other team gets more opportunities, just like turnovers. So it's always important to give yourself a few extra possessions to do that, and also important to limit your other, the opponent's uh, opportunity to do that. Well, Coach, as I mentioned uh, on the women's segment of the show, we're glad that you and the team are back on the court. And I want to thank you for taking the time out today and wish you, the staff, and the players the best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right, so now it's time to welcome our men's players to the show, the senior class. Uh, senior forward, John Meeks, senior center, Paul Newman, and senior guard, Jordan Seachin. Good afternoon, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So, John, we're going to get things rolling with you first. John's a 6'6 forward from Burlington, North Carolina, where he attended the Burlington School before coming to Bucknell. John, I'm sure you're itching to get back on the floor this week. How do you feel physically, and how excited are you for Saturday? I feel good. I'm ready to go. Um, I'm glad I got a week to prepare. Um, and with COVID, you know, you can't really plan on too many days. Um, but we're taking it one day at a time, and I think we'll be ready. How tough was it last weekend when – Physically, you're probably okay, but you're stuck in the protocol and you and you, you can't play in a game. You have to watch your teammates from the sideline. Yeah, no, it was definitely frustrating, but that's that's where the senior leadership comes in. You got to do the other things um, to try to stay engaged to the game. That way you help the people on the floor. And I'm going to throw in a viewer question for you, and you may recognize where this individual is from. It's from Jennifer in New Canaan, Connecticut. And she wants to know, how do you stay in shape while you're in quarantine? Um, well, with the help of her son, we were able, me and him were able to do a lot of workouts together. <laughs> uh, he kept me motivated. We, it's kind of just, it was definitely mutual, just pushing each other. That way it's not just all by yourself. So definitely with the support of your teammates. Yeah, you kind of figured that out. That was Jordan's mom. I wasn't going to ask Jordan the question. I had somebody else, so you're the lucky one. So obviously you played really well during the stretch of games in January against Lehigh. What was working so well for you personally during that time? Um, just being aggressive. Um, there's a lot of opportunities. You just got to go out and take it. Um, and that's kind of what we got to carry over to playoff time. It's just it's, uh, pedal to the metal now. And there's one thing that anybody that had the opportunity to see you play those games surely has noticed is that you came back to this year in probably the best shape that we've seen you in in four years. You were injury-free at the time. How much was that a positive that you did not have any injuries to deal with at the time and you could get yourself back into that shape and be ready to go? You know, that helps a lot, um, being injury-free, because it allows for the last question you had for the workouts. 
Um, you're able to stay in shape. You're not sitting around just kind of waiting. You're able to actually prepare and give your full effort to the game. So with all the starts and the stops to the season this year, John, where do you think the team is right now? And where's the mindset? I think we're in a great place. It's playoff time. So now we just got to go and get the job done. Does postseason play bring an extra level of intensity, or do you treat it just like a regular game? Oh, no. It's, it's winter and go home now, so we got to take it to a new level, um, especially with all the stuff we've been through this season. We're extra motivated. We don't want to push you out the door, and I'm sure you're not ready for nostalgia just yet. But it's hard to believe we're nearing the end of your senior year. What are some of your favorite memories from your time at Bucknell? Um, we've really been talking about it with Jordan and Paul. It's, it was that championship. Um, just what that did for us as a team and everything. So we got to get back to that. All right. Well, John, thanks for being here. We wish you and the rest of the team the best of luck against Lafayette on Saturday. Appreciate it. All right. Time to welcome in Paul Newman. Paul is a 6'9 center from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he attended Roman Catholic High School before heading to the St. Andrews School in Rhode Island prior to attending Bucknell. Paul, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Paul, obviously a tough weekend against American with so many of your front court mates out of action. Did you have to manage your game differently against the Eagles in both those games to conserve energy and, and be cautious about fouls? Uh, it wasn't so much about conserving energy because I felt like I was in great shape. But, uh, yes, the fouls was definitely a, a part of the problem. Uh, staying out of foul trouble would have helped my team. And, you know, just, just being there on the court because, you know, I'm, the, I'm that senior leadership with, you know, Jordan and John saying and just helping other teammates out. That was a major part for me to pick up a, a, for a second role while we was out there and we had people out. So. So, Paul, if those guys were in the protocol and they couldn't play in the games, uh, for the fans at home, does that also mean that they weren't able to practice? And if they weren't, who'd you go against in practice? Uh, I went against Jake Van Dyne. He's a, he's a strong guy. He's a strong, big, strong guy. So, <laughs> it's still going up against something every day, but, you know, it was just different. All right. So, what will you be focused on in practice this week leading up to Lafayette? Um, well, we're focusing on what Lafayette's bigs do. They're more uh, like point, point away, point over action, and they like to shoot the mid-range and just stand at the free throw line and kind of pick us apart with their passes. They're not really, you know, post-oriented, like big, big moves and get into, get into the basket and everything. So we just have to focus on keeping them out of the paint and making sure they don't pick us apart and make sure that we get more rebounds because they, they are pretty big. So we just have to do our job early. And Coach mentioned that Mafia teams more recently have been better defensively. Uh, from a player standpoint, have you noticed that during the four years you've been here that the Lafayette teams have got better defensively? Oh, yes. Over over the years, I've seen we, – well, we've watched Lafayette evolve from where they were freshman year to where they are now, and they've, they've made some pretty pretty big strides in their play. But, and, it, and it's shown. It's shown this year, and – this year we'll have to, you know, take a different approach and hopefully we get them back for all the times that they beat us this year. So you've been going up against freshman Andre Screen a lot in practice. Uh, give the Bison fans a scouting report on Andre and how much he's improved since August. That kid's special. He's he's going he's going to be really good. He just doesn't know it yet. He get, he's he's really young. He, you know, he got still got that baby baby head on him. But as soon as he, all that goes away, he'll be. He'll, be, he'll put on a show for you guys. Simple, simple as that. He, he, has a, he has a lot of tangibles to his game. He likes to post up. He likes to shoot the ball. He passes, he, he passes very well. Um, he's very mobile. And, you know, just with time, he's going to get really – he's going to be really good. This question ties into what you just said about Andre, but it expands on it a little bit. It's a viewer question, and this is from Ken in Georgia. And he wants to know, even with the short season – can you discuss the impact and progress the freshman class made on the men's basketball team? Um, they've made a pretty big impact. You know, you see, you've seen it in the games. They've been scoring very well, playing very well. They're just, you know, they just have the freshman mindset still and, you know, coming out of high school, so they don't really understand the college game fully, but they have definitely made impact to where 
they've helped us win games at times. And we just need them to, you know, start learning the game and figuring stuff out. And as soon as they do, it's, it's going to be over for them. You've mentioned some of the things that, you know, they're not used to yet making that transition still from the high school game to the college game and academically as well. Are there, there uh, pieces of advice as a senior that you and John and Jordan have been able to give to the underclassmen to kind of help them along in the process? This has not been a typical year for anybody, but certainly not for a college freshman anywhere. Um, well, the advice I would give them is, is the advice that one of our former teammates gave us is from Nate Jones said, just don't stress, you know, just, just try to take it day by day. Just go along with the, with the flow, you know, don't, don't stress about anything. Make sure, you know, you get your schoolwork done. And so as, as long as you get your schoolwork done, you can play basketball and that's all we're here for. So well, that's good advice. And Paul, we appreciate you taking the time out to be with us today. Good luck against the Leopards on Saturday. Uh, Bison Nation will be pulling for all you guys. Thank you. All right, so our final guest today is senior guard Jordan Seachin. Jordan is from New Canaan, Connecticut, and attended the Northfield Mount Hermon School in Massachusetts prior to coming to Bucknell. Jordan, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So as one of the seniors and veterans on the team, how have you handled the uncertainty of the last few months and what advice, same question I gave Paul, what advice have you given to the younger guys? Uh, just trying to keep everybody focused. I mean, this has definitely been the hardest year we've had as a group, um, like just staying focused and staying focused on the goal of winning, considering guys like me and John have only really played six games, you know, and that's been tough. So we just trying to keep the younger guys focused. Um, you know, they've never experienced a college basketball season before. Um, and this is the hardest one we've ever experienced. So keeping them focused is the main thing. And I think everybody's doing a really good job with that. Jordan, talk a little bit about your journey. And I know for some folks out there might know that you considered um, playing somewhere else, maybe with that extra year of eligibility, but you came back to be with the Bison. What was that whole process like? And, and how do you feel it's gone? Uh, I'm actually still working on that process. I actually have two more years of eligibility eligibility, um, which is awesome. I can go into grad school and play somewhere, but with all the uncertainty of COVID, you know, I'm still figuring all that out, but, um, you know, it's been awesome being a bison and I wouldn't change any of that for the world. So you've had a, you're, you're going to have a full week here to prepare for Lafayette. What kinds of things, uh, are you working on in practice and how do you think the team's going to respond heading into a postseason game? <laughs> Um, personally, I'm just trying to, you know, help the guys, like the guards at Lafayette, they, they have great guard play, um, especially, uh, all, all four of their guards, um, play a lot of minutes and put the ball in the hoop at a high volume. So I'm trying to, you know, do my best to get them prepared for that. And, uh, you know, as a team, we just gotta, we just gotta be focused and kind of forget about the games in the beginning of the year, because we weren't at full strength at that point. And we were also, you know, very young at that point too guys had not even played a game before uh, like the freshmen had not even played a game before those games and you know I really think that this time around it'll be much different. So something you hear as a student athlete anytime as a freshman is enjoy it it's going to go by quickly. Now you're on the other end of the spectrum and it's gone by quickly. What are some of the favorite memories you have of your time as a Bucknell Bison? Uh, I mean obviously it, it did go by really quickly. I didn't believe when, you know, Nana and Steve and Zach used to tell me, like, it goes by quick. You're like, yeah, like, whatever. Like, this the freshman year felt so long. And then after that, it, it's like at the blink of a finger, it went by. But um, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry, I forgot it. Just, no, just some of your favorite memories. Oh, favorite memory. Uh, yeah. Definitely the tournament. You can't go wrong with the tournament. I mean, that was an unbelievable experience, um, especially with that group of guys. It was unreal. Uh, but other than that, just the relationships that I made, I mean, I still talk to, like, I was talking to Nana last week. Um, like I talked to Kimball, Sassy, those guys on a weekly basis. Um, you know, obviously my, my roommates in this class, but you know, the relationships that I made with these people here has been probably my favorite thing out of it all. That segues perfectly into the next question I'm going to ask you. And it, it was going to be as a member of the Bucknell basketball family, how much do you guys follow 
the guys that graduated before you that who might be playing either overseas or Nate Sestina, guys like that. How much do you guys follow what they're doing on a daily basis? I mean, every day, like we're, we're watching Nate right now play in the G League bubble. You know, we watch all his games and we can't really watch the guys overseas as much because you don't really know where where it's on or what link you're going to have to go and watch those guys. But I mean, we follow them. We see their stats on Instagram and social media and whatnot. And, you know, we're always texting, talking, congratulating them for what they're doing. Um, and it's just, it's the Bison family is just unbelievable. Um, you know, you see people walking around, they're talking to you like on campus, just like everybody is in the Bison family is awesome. And just a really close group. It really is family. So I know uh, you alluded to this um, a few seconds ago, but what's been your major here at Bucknell and what are your plans following graduation? Uh, sounds like they may not be known yet at this point, though. Yeah, uh, not known completely yet, but I've been majoring in psych, minor in economics, um, just the same as John and Trey. Um, we all have the same major, which is pretty cool, so we can take a lot of classes together. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm not really sure of my plans just yet, but... Uh, everybody will know them when I when I make the decision. So, well, Jordan, it's been great having you as a member of the basketball program here at Bucknell, and all three of you guys. And you've been a great senior class, and we wish you and your teammates the best of luck against the Leopards, and fully expect to see you guys move on to the next round. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here today. So, thanks so much for your time today, guys. Appreciate uh, all our guests. As a reminder, don't miss out on the opportunity to get your own personalized fan cutout in Soika Pavilion. Uh, You can still do that, even though we're at the end of the season. And just about wrap up today's luncheon, we want to thank Maddie's Sporthouse Grill in Lewisburg for sponsoring our basketball luncheons this season. And thank you to Jeffrey Campbell, John Terry, Ben Blumenthal, and Jess O'Shaughnessy for their assistance with today's event. We wish both teams good luck this weekend, and go Bison!